Today we have Dr. Jean Michel, Chief Economist for the EMEA region for SP Global, with us to discuss global developments. Welcome to Crystal TV, Dr. Jean Michel. Thank you. Uh, let's begin with the big question. The world economy in the, is in the midst of a recovery which is synchronized, seems to be the strongest since the global financial crisis. What exactly is behind this? And more importantly, is it sustainable this time, particularly in Eurozone? Well, indeed. I mean, we're looking at a pretty strong upturn. It's a cyclical upturn after many years of uh, weak growth, especially in developed markets. Uh, what has triggered this uh, change, this upturn, certainly a combination of several factors, a very strong monetary stimulus. This cannot be ignored, uh, coming both from the US in the last few years, the UK, and more recently from the European Central Bank since 2015. Uh, in total, if you look at the combined balance sheet of the largest central banks, they've expanded for from about $4 trillion before the crisis to about $15 trillion today. So a very strong st monetary stimulus. Second factor, uh, structural reforms in some countries at least. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking in Europe, for instance, countries like Spain, for instance, that has really nicely recovered. Um, reforms that are starting to kick in in countries like France and others. So that's, I think, a second wave. And then, of course, we had a third but more cyclical element, which is the drop in commodity prices after 2014. That has boosted real incomes and triggered a bit of a virtuous circle with higher real incomes triggering stronger consumption, in turn, in turn leading to stronger jobs, growth, etc. Well, we know that there has been an extraordinary uh, stimulus from the monetary policy side, not only conventional, but also unconventional. And since growth is moving up, there is an expectation that that stimulus will be unwound. I mean, in the sense that uh, we'll see increases in interest rates and also unwinding of the quantitative easing program of a massive scale. Now, when, when the economies were in trouble, every, there was a synchronized, synchronized cutting of interest rates. But is it going to be easy for all countries to start raising interest rates, even though the recovery is synchronized? And if it is asymmetric, what, what does it mean? Indeed, we believe that it is going to be asymmetric. Uh, the Fed is starting to tighten. They will reduce their balance sheet and, at the same time, hike interest rates. But the cycle in the U.S. is less recent than in Europe. The U.S. economy has been expanding for over eight years in a row. Inflation has picked up, and so it's fairly legitimate to see uh, uh, the beginning of a normalization process. By the way, we need to stress also that this normalization process is unprecedented yeah. and therefore presents natural risks as with any uh, new experiment. As far as other central banks is concerned, be it uh, the BOJ in Japan or especially the European Central Bank, we expect such tightening to happen much later. Uh, the economic cycle in Europe is more recent, more fragile. Inflation is still well below the target of the ECB. 9% is still a very elevated unemployment rate. For all those reasons, we expect the quantitative, quantitative easing program to continue uh, through next year, and we do not expect any hike in interest rates before at least the end of 2019. What that means is logically we should see an appreciation of the US dollar exchange rate against most currencies, especially the euro, in, co in the coming year and a half. But of course, at the same time, there are other developments, especially on the fiscal side in the US, that could somewhat disturb that logical consequence. Well, I think let's finally talk about Brexit. I think that's where a lot of fog is there. UK decided to divorce itself from the European Union, and we know that divorces are always messy, and particularly if there are too many strings attached. So where are we on this uh, divorce settlement, uh, uh, and, and, and is there any chance that UK may not exit the, the Eurozone or Euro, Euro area? We are looking at a very paradoxical situation, DK, where on one hand, the UK economy has proven to be stronger, more resilient uh, since the beginning of this Brexit process that could have be, then could have been feared uh, after July 2016. We are looking at a rate of growth that's certainly moderating, that's diminishing, but it's after a long period of expansion. And honestly, uh, a lot of resilience since still in the system. 
at the same time, the negotiations, to be fair, are not going well. Uh, in fact, so far, it's fair to say that they're going nowhere. Uh, the three more contentious issues that were to be addressed at the very beginning of the negotiations have still not reached a conclusion, that is the Irish border, the status of EU citizens in the UK post-Brexit, and the divorce bill, where numbers floating around are still between 20 billion euros and 100 billion euros, so very wide range. So long as no progress has been made on those three issues, we will not be able to, to go to the next step, the genuine trade negotiations. Now, to your second question, whether uh, we could see a no Brexit outcome, I think that remains very unlikely. The referendum had delivered a very clear verdict, 53% in favor of Brexit. And uh, it would be at this point uh, in time, I think for the Tories in particular, very difficult to move back and, and reconsider this whole uh, decision. Mrs. May said something, the, the, the British Prime Minister said something which I think not only made sense, but I think should also help us understand the future, which is Brexit means Brexit. And indeed, it will mean Brexit, which of course may require an extension in the negotiations uh, beyond 2019, given the lack of progress. But at the end of the day, there will be a Brexit. Well, I think overall, uh, good news coming from Europe, uh, despite some of the risks. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jean Michel, for talking to us. Thank you, DK. And viewers, thank you very much for listening to us. Thank you.